Saving water for a thirsty world, one property at a time. Water signal. Measures water flow continuously to detect leaks and conserve water. Atlanta's water rates are among the highest in the nation. Water conservation is defined as any action that reduces the amount of water withdrawn from a water supply, reduces consumptive use, reduces the loss or waste of water, improves the efficiency of water use, or recycles and reuses water. Let's take a look at how water is used in office buildings. 40% of water is used in the restroom. 28% is used in cooling towers. 22% is used in landscaping. Water conservation plans must be integrated with other areas of operation. For example, irrigation amounts will be directly impacted by the landscaping scenario. Water conservation also involves both a technical aspect, such as the metering devices themselves, as well as a human component, that is, the attitudes towards water conservation. A water conservation plan requires accurate data. An effective plan examines how much water is used, when the water is used, and where the water is used. All three of these can be determined by a water audit and a facility survey. When performing a water audit, be sure to review the floor plans and the plumbing schematics. Identify and locate all water meters. Inventory the fixtures and the flow rates of the fixtures. And check the irrigation system and the irrigation schedule. When performing a water audit, review the water bills for the past two years. Check to make sure that building occupancy is still accurate. A good place to start is reviewing prior water audits. Keep in mind future water and sewer billing rates. Increases tomorrow will affect decisions today. When performing a facility survey, start by measuring the fixture flow rates. Check the irrigation system usage, as well as the cooling tower usage. Next, compute the total water use and the cost. Major discrepancies between the facility's total usage and the sum of each area may indicate underground leaks. When performing your plan of action, do the no-brainer fixes first. These are typically fixes that either cost little to no money and are very easy to do. Next, identify system and equipment changes needed. Third, estimate the cost and the time to implement. And be sure to compute the return on investment keeping in mind rising water and sewer rates. Examples of no-brainer fixes include inspecting the buildings weekly for leaks, checking restrooms, kitchens, water lines, and hose bibs. Repair leaks and drips immediately. A dripping faucet can waste over 10,000 gallons per month. Be sure to close restrooms and shut off water in areas not being used or vacant spaces. Also, check meters for any vacant buildings to confirm low or no usage. Be sure to winterize outdoor spigots and pipes in unheated areas to prevent freezing and leaking. Tour the entire property monthly, checking the water lines and the vaults for leaks. Look for wet spots and alligator paving, which may indicate underground leaks. Be sure to educate your tenants and your employees to conserve water and report leaks. Remember, it's good for business and good for the environment. Additional water savings may be achieved by installing low-flow fixtures. Consider metered valve, self-closing, infrared, and ultrasonic sensor fixtures. Also consider waterless urinals. Install water submeters for further detailed water monitoring and management. Reduce water pressure if possible. Excessive pressure increases leaks and may damage fixtures. Also, adjust the metered flow if it's higher than necessary. With regard to irrigation, be sure to inspect the irrigation system for leaks, broken heads, and properly set timers on a weekly basis. Also, adjust the sprinkler heads to ensure that they're watering the proper areas and not the pavement. Be sure to install rain and freeze sensors and have them inspected weekly. And don't water when raining or forecasted to rain. Consider collecting rainwater for landscape irrigation. Or, irrigate using detention pond or reservoir water. Be sure to water early, before dawn, to reduce evaporation. Also, concentrate water delivery at the roots, not on the trunks or leaves. Also, consider xeriscaping or drought-tolerant turfs. Remember to adjust your watering on a seasonal basis. Water loss in cooling towers occurs from evaporation, bleed-off or blowdown, drift, and leaks. 
Be sure to inspect your cooling towers for leaks and for malfunctioning valves on a regular basis. Consider installing flow meters on makeup and bleed off lines. Be sure to read meters regularly and keep a log of makeup and bleed off quantities. Be sure to investigate any additional sources of makeup water.